recent grad. Just wanted to say I wish I read this a few years ago and studied physio instead. So obviously they read my why you should quit your nutrition degree. Oh, okay, right, yeah. Um, jokes aside, I have an observation that hardly any brackets basically no dietitians work full time, i.e., forty hours paid work at the same location in private practice. Is this your observations as well? And if not, what is the key to establishing FTE clinic besides giving free lunches to GPs? <laughs> Not even a guarantee. Yeah. Definitely not a guarantee. <laughs> so, oh, okay, wow, two part question off. really. So, is it so yeah. our observations as well that people work 40 hours in one clinic location? Yeah, no, no way. I don't know a single person. I'm not saying they're not out there. I think they're, they'd be rare as fuck. Oh, God. Even 40 minutes? Yeah, but private practice. Oh, no. No. You, you can do 40 hours as a hospital dietitian in this sort of clinic, mm -hmm. outpatient, government yeah, organisation. Yeah. But Not in a private practice in one location, very, very unlikely, at least across two or three um, at min, really. Um, and then on top of that, that, that dietitian probably, most dietitians would have other things in their basket that they're doing on top of. It might be, oh, they might have an aged care. And look, you're not going to sustain a 40 hour week if you're not marketing. Like if you're in 40 hours in private practice, like holy shit, I want to meet you. Mm -hmm. And if you're not doing a single answer yeah, marketing, hit us up if you and, are. and if you're doing that, like yeah. call us on our mm -hmm. shit and then we'll probably invite you on to tell us your secrets. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, no. So what should we what you do to establish an FTE clinic? Um, you're not going to be able to um, establish an FTE 40 hour clinic in one location. I just don't think it's really possible unless it's a very specialized scene you've got amazing contacts and then you've got no competitors um, the issue with getting FTE nowadays is or forever there's competition um, and now it's getting more saturated than ever so if you want that in one location it's likely that you've got another medical center nearby that was referring to you and then all of a sudden that medical center has got a dietitian now your referral base is still because that GP wants their 20% from that, or 30% or 40% from that dietitian who's working in their clinic, not from giving it to you and getting no kickback. So, very difficult. How can you do it? We've talked about it a lot. Marketing, being good, getting client results. Social media is massive. Um, GP marketing, yeah. Like, mm. unfortunately, Managing. you're going to have to do free lunches. Like, that's. Managing no shows. Yeah, and like, procedures. Yeah. Like Pay, charging up the arts for some clients for this strategy. You could just charge a lot more and see fewer clients um, and get full time money for less hours. Um, but then you've got to find the people that actually do that. Or you do bulk bill and you try and fill it that way. But neither way is going to be foolproof. And it's not going to be, um, we've talked about actually this week about lulls in private practice, they happen. And there's certain times throughout the year that they do happen. And in different locations, they'll happen at different times. Like Melbourne, it's shit in winter because everyone leaves because it's cold as hell. Mm -hmm. So they want to go somewhere else. Like here, like we get a lull around July, August, September. Um, that's with care plans and things of that nature. Um, we know school holidays suck. So I think it just all depends. Um, but how can you do it? Like there's no right, that with FTA right in, in a private practice. There's going to be so much unpaid work because of all oh, the you know, letters and admin stuff that you'd have to do and, and the like, so... Imagine how many GP letters you'd have to do if you're working five days a week in a God, clinic. kill me, and as well as that, yeah. Because you've, you've got to be seeing at least 12, 15 clients a day, mm. at least. The other aspect is it worthwhile. a burnout of that bullshit. Well, yeah, well, I'd be deaf on two legs if I was... Yeah, well, I did that pretty much. Practice. Yeah, especially in the same location, in the same room every single day. Mm -hmm. I think some people get a bit weird about being in different locations, like, oh, I just wish I was in one. But then if you're just in one, holy shit. Talk about, um, what do they call it? Cabin fever. Like, mm -hmm. you just be... Yeah, I get cabin fever sitting in a room for like a full day. <laughs> Give me some sun! <laughs> I used well, to like have windows in my, in my, my clinic, like, peer out. So, sorry that couldn't be like this world renowned thing. It is a grind, it is a constant work and constant effort. And, and me, you, and other dietitians that we know that are amazing private practice um, dietitians, they do not work that. Position. And they still struggle. Yeah. We all do. Like, we all do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's a constant thing. It's not something you're going to be comfortable with and you're going to be able to 
just kick back and relax. You've got to work at it every single day. That's the life you've chosen. And yeah, like I've got what three or four people on waiting list for my next clinic. I can guarantee that people are going to cancel and then I'll end up with gaps in my day, even though it ends up being like super busy and then you're like, oh, I've got a bit of gaps. It's just like, yeah, it happens. You, you gotta, you gotta ride it. Um, but that's why getting into dietetics it isn't for the money. If you're doing it for the money, go be a lawyer or accountant or something else that makes money. <laughs> An influencer on Instagram. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is where you make some dough.